Good weekend. Ira Epstein with your weekend edition of your Spider ETF market wrap up. And this is for a pretty wild Friday and we're at September 2nd, 2002. Well, if you look behind me, you got an awful lot of what color. You can see an awful lot of red confusion too. Uh, you've got some markets like AMC up. Is there a surprise? $3 ticket day tomorrow, Saturday. Take the family, go enjoy and buy condiments. Help these guys out. We don't want these theaters to go away. Metal markets up a little bit. Uh, came back quite a bit from the highs, but still up on the day. FXE held up. UUP probably down a little bit on that. TLT up as well. And you can see oil market holding. Now, come September 5th, we get the OPEC Plus uh, meetings to take place. and They're going to discuss output. Wouldn't surprise me if they discuss heavily cutting production. Will they do it this meeting? Your guess is as good as mine, but they've got to be looking at China, the lockdowns that are taking place, U.S. economy, the Fed making its moves. Uh, you're going to see the Bank of England. You're going to see the European Central Bank. They're all making their moves. Their economies are hurting. Maybe there is too much oil being produced from their point of view. Be careful about that. The other thing that happened, and let's get to that uh, if we could right here, is we had our non-farm payroll number. Now, there's a couple of things you don't read about too often, but let me bring it to you. August is notorious for getting revisionments, and that's because people go on vacation. In the United States, a lot of people take their final vacations right now in this month, and sometimes that form comes in, the government looks at it, uh, they don't get them all in. This was one of the lowest responses since 2006. That tells me the number's not right. Which way? It means it's going to be higher jobs. So I think this number didn't show you the whole story. I'm looking at the participation rate, which went to 62.4 from 62.1. What's the importance of that? Well, you added 786,000 new people to the payrolls. What does that mean? It means that they're, well, to the job force, let's call it that way, into the job force. Those people come on and I go apply for a job and the guy right behind me wants the same job. I got a lot more people applying for it. I now, my friend or me, another me, there's two of me, I'm the also the owner of the company and I go, you know, I don't think I have to pay these guys as much as I was uh, thinking about it and I start lowering what I'm gonna offer. Maybe the first Ira doesn't take the job, but the second he's saying, hey, you know, I've been looking around a little, this is what I want. Yeah, I'll take that number. This is where you stop the wage inflation, but it doesn't mean it falls. Remember, we're looking to see what sticky inflation is gonna be like. That same employer, me, the grunge, I'm not going out there and I've got uh, 50 employees and I say to them, hey guys, I got to tell you, I can replace you all or I can give you 10% less. Which one do you want? Those things don't happen. So who you've brought in, number one, you keep at the rates that you've done. The new people that you hire, it depends what you're paying old people, everybody talks. So it gets a little hard to do these things. I'm just giving you the practical world of what really goes on. And this is gonna be the argument you're gonna start hearing from the Fed. So be careful because they will talk down the road. Yes, we're seeing the uh, inflation numbers come down 80 days in a row of gasoline prices going lower. That's gonna come into the cards. We're down pretty hard. You know, corn markets and markets like that are down two and a half dollars from their tops they made this summer. So there's something to be said that certain prices are coming down, but I don't see rents coming down, new negotiations maybe, but again, that's sticky, the people that went in. So this is what our Fed's gonna happen, have happen. The other argument I want you to listen to, don't listen to these guys that don't know what they're talking about. They're all talking about already, when is the Fed gonna end its rate hikes? That's not what it's about. It's about how aggressive do they have to be right now in the rate hikes, not when are they gonna end it. They're not gonna end it until the Fed fund rate is above whatever inflation comes down to and sticks at. So as they all talk this, why don't they just say it? Oh, this is where I think inflation will fall to and that's when I think the Fed will end. Better way of doing it. They won't do that. That's not even the question they're being asked on properly on TV. 
When I look at GameStop here, and I'm, I'm, I won't cover it next week, I just want to do it. One person asked me, why did I do it? I did it because all these Reddit groupies love to buy these things. And if they've been buying it, they've been getting their head handed to them. As this stock was down 11% this week, last week this stock was down, just to show you, 15%. The week before it was down 10%. So 10 and a half, 25 and three quarters, 36, 37 and a quarter percent down in no time at all. That's the point that I was making. You know, what's the chart action look like? Well, let's go to the next chart. Higher high, lower low, no real setup there that I'm seeing. When we come to the next chart, you still with that pattern, now you're under the 18 week average. Now, it means you're not trending. While the swing line's got a higher high and lower and low, the bias is down. Potential support might be the 200-week moving average or the Bollinger Band, which is above it, which is a better number at 2388. And what about momentum? Getting oversold? No, you don't look at overbought, oversold on weekly charts. Momentum down, bias down. First support, if it's going to stay in these narrow bands, which is what I expect it to do, by the way, I'll look for support around 2388. Then we get to KBE. So you've had a pattern of a lower low and a higher high. What do you do the first time you get up to Bollinger Bands and you have a market that's not embedded? I contend the pros take money off the table. You will hear me say that on the daily charts, the weekly charts over and over. There is a huge difference between getting out of a long and going short. I am not saying to go short. I am saying the market's void of trend. When it got up there, I think the pros took their money off the table. Pretty close here in XLE, too. You basically went from big time support. And when it was down here, I told you I love the combination of be it the 100 day or the 200 day moving average in a Bollinger Band. First time you hit them off, you'll try to find support. And then if you slice through it, we'll look to see if there's something else under the chart. In this one, we had a heck of a roll to the upside, but you had a lower low and a higher high. I call that a vertical price rise. The only way you can get involved is throw a dart out there and say, I've decided to buy the market. As a chartist, there's nothing there. And now the first move over, the 100-week average up to that band proved to be the resistance point. That's what you keep looking at. In the energy sector, I, I suspect that what if, if I'm an OPEC Plus member, I'm cutting production. I have given the world through the whole summer increases. I want to maintain something in the neighborhood of $85 to $100 a barrel. You guys are all weakening your economies. You're raising rates as a group. You're going to saying as the Fed did, that we're going to create pain. Maybe I shouldn't give you as much oil so that we hold our price where we want it, being the OPEC Plus members. The mindset. I'm looking for this market to find support here. So I think this week you're going to see the pros nibbling at the 78.49 level. Under, and it's a lot of risk. I don't like the risk. It's 10% in price. Under this break low, and to get there, let, let's do it together and see what I can get to. There we go. One more, because I don't remember it myself. 70.69. So... Am I keen on risking almost 10% of the price of a chart? No. So as much as I think that that's an interesting area, I think it's too much money to risk on a trade. In SPY, trend is up. Again, you got and fought that battle at the 100 uh, week average. You ended up spending about a week and a half over it and then right back under it. So now you have momentum down, the trend is up, and well, bias down, momentum down, trend up. You have a mess of a chart. There's nothing there. GLD. I was looking at this today, and if you were my with me this morning in my uh, updates when I was doing my morning subscriber video, you know what I was saying. As this market was rallying uh, on days like today, I was saying, I'll bet the pros are selling it. But this is a weekly chart, not a daily chart. Lower highs, lower lows. This is where the major support is. 156.79 to 156.88. Still have momentum down. You're not through on the downside. And there's a lot of resistance if you come back up at between the 18 and the 100 day average. In the gold miners, if gold's in trouble, why do you want to own a miner? 
this market's also got an embedded reading. So I think it's trying very hard to get down to the lower Bollinger Band, and that's where I expect to see professional short covering. ARC, she's still got a lot of problems. She had that run up. Here, here's the problem now for Kathy Wood. She owns a lot of these companies that have something to do with China. That, that's at least when I look at the portfolio. China's going in the toilet. 31 provinces, what I read this week, each province has COVID cases, which makes sense. Each state in the United States has COVID cases. But when they get 900 in a city, they shut the city down, as they've just done. So if you do that, we're back into what companies are there. Now, Volvo had a shutdown. Toyota and I think Honda are still open because they have what's called campuses. So they bring in the people and they tell them, hey, you're working, you can't go home. The city's in a lockdown, you're stuck here, you're gonna work, you can have some recreation time. You might as well work in a concentration camp. That's no life, but that's what they do. That's their method of doing it. Higher, high, lower, low. Can you imagine? Sometimes you're there a month or two and you can't leave. You're just there with the guys you're working with. Don't you think you'd go a little stir crazy? Okay. Apple. From the lower Bollinger Band to the upper Bollinger Band to a September, as it's seventh, is the rollout of iPhone 14 and the watch. Okay, I'm looking for support to show up in the market. Even though a lot of markets are down, even though it's going to be very expensive, it's got a loyal base and they've been waiting for big changes. If these are the products that deliver it, and from everything I'm hearing on the iPhone 14, it is, I know nothing about the watch. I don't even wear typically a watch. If you want to send me a new iPhone 14, I'd, I'd love to try it out. But in any case, this is what I'm thinking uh, of it. I, I think it'll find some support there. I'm certainly not a bear. It's one of my favorite stocks to own for the long pull. I believe in this company in a major way. Tesla, I'm not in the camp that all of you are. I keep looking at that gorgeous lyric commercials that I'm seeing. And I love the song, the guy with the, the beat, and the car looks absolutely beautiful. I have not seen one in person. I want to see them in person. I told you I saw one of their competitors in uh, Phoenix, and it was a beautiful car. I saw it on the street. It wasn't so beautiful. Uh, maybe I saw the wrong color, but it was brown. It was ugly. The white one was stunning. In any case, Tesla's going to get a run for its money because... People are going to come out with choices of design, and not everybody likes the starkness of the interior of the Tesla. Reminds me of a Porsche. Some people love it. Other people want the Ferrari. So everything's different, but the fact that there's choices is going to take something away from this company. That's my prediction as to what goes on with it. In any case, higher high, lower low, not seeing an awful lot there. Twitter. Again, if you're playing Twitter, it's throwaway money. I've made that clear. I, I have already made my stand in the market there. It's throw away money. It has nothing to do with the chart. Do you believe that Tusk is going to end up owning the company? If you do, I don't believe it's at $54. I think there's a number closer to $50. There'll be a negotiation. If the fraud that the whistleblower brought out and the judge buys into that, maybe he doesn't buy it. That's a long shot, in my opinion. Could happen, though. TLT, higher, high, and lower, and low. You're just caught in the sideways action here. I teach you, never go short. Lower Bollinger Bands. I, I, I can't be clear in what I'm saying. Now, there's something else that I want to tell you for the weekend, because it is this fabulous day, and I'm having my Labor Day sale from the 2nd through the 6th. And on this sale... Any of my research products, not my education, my courses, exclusive of that. This is for new and returning customers, not existing clients. I want to make that clear, too. So existing clients always get a deal on my courses that you don't get. So everybody gets something from me. If you want to come in, buy any of my research, one year, one month, your choice, uh, 50% off. It's only going to last four days. Why not take advantage? The season is right in front of you. It's a steal. How do you do it? You can go to our website at irapstein.com. You can also at any point just follow me, take your cursor, move it to the top of this. You'll see an icon hit there. Click on it with your cursor at that point off your screen. 
you'll be right into the area where you do this from. Choose yearly or monthly, year call, spider ETF, morning futures, full research where you get everything, or the combo package too, where you get spider ETF and the futures. I'm my reps team. You have yourself a great day, and I will talk to you all come Tuesday. Take care.